Today, I'm gonna walk us through how to create your first ever prof portfolio for aspiring UX researcher. Uh, when I first started my portfolio a few years ago, uh, I feel like there were tons of resources around how to create portfolio for UX designers, but not so much resources on how to create portfolio for researchers. Uh, which is the reason why I'm creating this video today for our aspiring researchers um, who are confused and are lost as to how to get started. So let's jump in. First of all, how is a portfolio used specifically for UX researchers? Portfolios are used by prospective employers and hiring managers to see a sample of our past work. Portfolios act as a way for us to show what our research process looks like, how we made a certain decision, uh, how we think through challenges and, and overcome challenges, and really demonstrate our achievements and strengths. In case study projects in our portfolios are a great opportunity for uh, UX researchers, especially junior UX researchers, to demonstrate our capabilities and, and strengths and better market ourselves as a desirable UX research candidate. For UX design roles, even the little tiny details in uh, portfolio design may be really important but in my opinion for UX research roles the content is what's going to be really important so before you dive into looking for you know what websites to use to create a portfolio um, you want to really make sure uh, the content and the details included in the content for case study project is good to go the number of case study projects I recommend including at least two to three projects to demonstrate your, your past work it can be something that you worked on back in uh, school or back in internship or um, something that you worked on at a boot camp or actually something that you worked on on your own as well but i recommend getting all the content details good to go before jumping in in like a notepad or a word document is what i use um, so that you can just copy and paste once you are ready to build out a portfolio i use wix to create my website um, it's honestly pretty easy to use uh, once you get the hang of it and then they have some really cool templates out there that make your portfolio look super aesthetic. For cost, you are able to actually create a website totally free of cost too. Uh, what I've seen so far with uh, UX design and research roles is that people at least try to pay for the purchase the domain name so that they can look up yourname.com, so tipster.com, uh, morganlee.com or something and arrive in your portfolio website which comes down to about $14.95 per month, uh, per, per year I mean. To use a premium plan on and Wix, I pay $150 per year, which is kind of expensive, but pretty worth it at the end of the day. All right, so let's dive into building the actual portfolio website. Starting from Wix.com, I already have this one right here, but I'm gonna create a new website. And then you're going to choose what kind of website you're building, which is going to be portfolio, obviously. So click portfolio and then next. And then here are some of the extra um, ones that you can add to your website. I didn't choose any of these, um, but I did include that I want to uh, include a blog, which is going to be used to uh, add your case study projects. And then next. And then you're going to choose uh, create your website uh, with the editor, which allows you to choose from thousands of templates rather than designing the website from scratch. So you're going to skip all the pro progress or process and start with the actual um, templates, amazing templates that Wix has from a bunch of different portfolios. Um, definitely play around with it and try to see if you can find something that fits your personality. But if you're like me and don't have too much visual creativity, uh, you probably want to choose something that's super straightforward and where you can add a bunch of text in blog style. So the ones that I really like, um, I'm going to try to choose resumes and CVs. And then this is actually the one that I chose uh, for my own portfolio. So I'm going to actually use this um, and click edit. Uh, once you are in it, you have the general framework and the design good to go. So you're just going to update the content so that it's for you. So the first page of your portfolio is pretty much um, the first impression of your uh, that your audience will have on you. So you might want to put something that highlights who you are as a researcher. Um, and so to change the text, you just double click on the text and update it. So you can double click and change it. So here I'm going to update to okay, my name is Tipster and I'm a UX researcher. All right. And then um, you can also change the other stuff. I'm Tiffany, a UX researcher. 
and then scroll down. All right, so I'm gonna start off by putting a brief description of who I am and my background um, here in this section. I love this portion because it allows me to showcase the tie between my old career and UX research in a narrative. So I'm gonna go over to this Word document right here that I've put together and then, so here's my brief, uh, brief uh, introduction, ex social media at wizard, now a UX, mix mix the UX researcher. So I'm gonna copy and paste this over. So there we go. Seems like this is a little bit cramped. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. I don't like this font. I'm gonna do something else. I don't know. Like I'll play around with it a little bit. Um, and then you can do line spacing as well since it looks a little bit cramped. So I'm gonna do maybe like, oh, actually not character spacing, line spacing. There we go. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so it looks good on the eye. And this looks a little bit odd too. So for something like this where, you know, font is like at the top, I don't know if this is made of purpose, but who am I? And then I'm gonna bring this over a little bit up. Like, this looks like a highlight, so I don't know why it's at the bottom. So, and then pulling it up is super simple, just dragging and drop thing and pulling this up. And then I don't know this empty space right here, so I'm just gonna pull everything up. So, pull it up, pull this, dragging this up as well. I don't know this one. Yeah, so it's basically up to me. So, I'm just gonna put it like this, just like a header. And then um, here, I'm gonna put, you know, these are basically strength. You can get rid of this by just like deleting it. Super simple, just deleting it. Um, but then I could also update this. So content strategy, I can't, uh, I don't even know, I'm just making stuff up. Campaign mark, campaign optimization. Oh, there's campaign management, but something relevant to you. To you. So usability test. Where am I? Usability test. And then um, user interview. Uh, journey mapping. User journey mapping. Super easy. Um, and you can create it however you want. These are just like skill sets that you want to highlight. And then um, here, I think this is the biggest part that's important. I'm gonna pull it down a little bit and pull this up a little bit. This is basically like a PowerPoint, like you can just drag and drop wherever you want these little things. And then you see C C C full C V, which is gonna be your resume. Um, this is probably one of the most important buttons out here or end links. And in order for you to link to this button right here, you'd click it, and then you're gonna see this little chain icon right here, linked to a document, and then, and then I could choose a file. Okay, I'm gonna drop my CV in this document right here. There we go, and then add to page. Once you click into it, you'll open a, a, a document automatically. Probably wanna update this photo right here, and if I don't want a photo at all, like I can just get rid of this too. So once you click into it, change column background, whatever this is, you can change it to whatever you want. Oh, interesting. Oh gosh, yeah. Avocados, I like avocados, so let's do that. <laughs> So something relevant, obviously, but you can put your photo or you can put something around you conducting user research or something talking to people. There's some more background, but you can skip this part. If you don't want to put extra stuff on the front page, you can just get rid of it by deleting it, deleting it, and just have these like extra stuff here. You can just like delete it. Like you don't need to have like, you don't need these. Like none of these are that important. So you can get rid of these and then, yeah, you can like start pulling things up. Dragging in and dropping. Dragging and dropping. Let's drag it all the way up, all the way up. Here we go. Study. Let's put case study. Project. And obviously, like I don't like how the header is not on the, the header. Actual. You can like whatever space you have left over. You can just simply click on the the strip right before below, and then dragging it and dropping it. And then here are some of the projects. Case study. That uh, demonstrate my user experience, research knowledge, skill sets, and capabilities. Obviously, just random words that I put, but there we go. It's very simple. Like, whatever you got, pull it up. There we go. And then whatever empty space you got, I don't like this, so I'm gonna pull this up a little bit too. Honestly, the two most important things that the audience, which is probably gonna be the hiring managers, is looking for is number one, my resume, and then number two, my case study projects. So I like to have my case um, CV readily available, which I can do by copying over the full CV thing. So if I were to go all the way up, and then hey, like this is the most important, so I'm gonna copy like Command C, and then bring this to CV um, at the very top. So once my, uh, I don't like this empty space button. I'm gonna make this a little bit shorter and pull this a little bit up. Yeah, if I want the, the whoever's looking at it to come right here and then see my CV, um, like they can click onto this and then go get straight into my uh, 
download my uh, resume. And obviously, I would want this to be updated. So we learned that change column background is basically like the updating the actual image. So I can click on image and then upload media. And then I'm going to bring my own image over here. Great. So change background. Perfect. I'm going to fold this a little bit. And then I like that highlight effect from before. So maybe I'm going to highlight tipster yellow. There we go. Yeah, I like this. And then, or, or actually, maybe I'll highlight UX Researcher. So you like play around with it and see what you like and dislike. Uh, tester, I'm not gonna do it. Okay, this is it. Great, this is a good start. Let's look at what we want as our main menu, right? At the right at the top. So, you know, this is great so far. Home CV blog, probably not blog. So I'm gonna update this to home resume. I honestly don't really know the difference. But so it, once you click on the main menu thing, manage menu, and then you'll see the four little buttons. You can change, rename these by clicking on um, the, the three dots at the bottom, at the, uh, on the right side, and then rename, and then resume. I don't know what the difference between resume and the CD is, but blog, we want case study. Done. And let's go to the resume page. In order to do that, you can just simply click on the site menu, whatever page it is. You can click on resume and get to this resume page. And here is pretty much the website version of your CV. Uh, and honestly, you don't need all these details. So if you go straight down, like there's a professional summary, um, skills, work experience, education, interests. Um, you can, what I did was I did put like a brief summary of my background and then skill sets, I just created it. And then work experience, I copied and pasted from my CV. Um, you don't need all these details, so you can remove these. You can remove some of these um, from each section. So for example, hey, like, I don't know. I don't think skills is important. If I were to say that, I could just delete it, delete it, delete it, delete it, and just like freaking pull it up, pull everything up. Oh, freaking like little white space. I hate this. So I'm gonna pull this, this thing up, as well as this. It's like Canva. You can just do whatever you want. And then, so you can select multi, and then pull it up, and then drag it up see something like this so you can copy and paste from your own CV and then again similarly to what I had done before um, for under professional summary it says download full CV that's gonna be the link to your CV so if you click into it and then linked and then choose file and then you know how I, I had um, uploaded a, a resume before add to page done so now when you click on this you're gonna get to um, the you're gonna download my CV Same menu again manage menu and then go to case study Is where I had talked about I mean, the blog thing, so you want to update this to case study. All right. In this part, you're on is specifically for designing web designing the website for the actual content of your case study. It's like creating blog articles here. So, so you see blog right here, right? Manage posts is what you're gonna click on. And now you get onto this interesting blog page. Um, this is where you're gonna manage all the case study content. So you click edit. Now, when I said earlier that you're gonna need at least two to three case study projects, I absolutely encourage you to include your past work as well and how tied your work past work may be to user experience research. So for most of my work, I actually signed the NDA. What about I show you mine? Um, so case study project, this is exactly like the one that I showed you. Uh, for my work, um, I actually signed the NDA and I couldn't share the details of my projects uh, while sharing what I can actually share, which includes the methodology that I'll actually click onto one of them which includes methodologies that I use and what work, you know, what my work entails. So what were my um, responsibilities? What were my, uh, like, what did I do basically, right? So obviously this is not really a demonstration of my work. However, it still helps visualize and further explain your past work experience in deeper context than your CV does. So this is what I did for a couple of the work. Actually, I did this for um, one of my work and then um, another one from back in the day. So this is not related to UX research. It's actually back in the marketing time uh, world. Um, but I included all the reasons why in, in content strategy, how that related to user research and how like how relevant the work was and how relevant the stakeholder uh, holder relationship was, management was, how relevant running a campaign was to running a facilitating a research and then synthesizing a research. That's something I did and I have something that I highly recommend that you do. So let's go back here. So like I said, I have put in my Word document the details. So this is a case study work. So whatever I put together, I'm just gonna copy and paste. So, okay, everything is probably, yeah. 
I'm just gonna copy it and then gonna delete it and copy and paste. So of course they're gonna be like the ones where um, the images might not be saved. So for those you're gonna have to add those images back in. So plus image. Uh, obviously like you're, you're gonna have everything saved in your computer so that's how you add in the um, images. Basically what you do is you publish and then it's pretty much okay. I put the wrong one. Reason I care now. You at um, UX research. Oh gosh. Um, Best Buy. UX research. All right, to publish. No, large. Not it. Um, everything else. I'm gonna delete them. Right. Maybe right, I'll just delete one more. Move to trash, and then I'll update this one probably. And then once you're done, you X out, and then. Voila, you're gonna have this in your in your uh, case studies. If you have to update it again, you click it, manage posts, and then you update everything in this dashboard, like blog dashboard. That's how you up upload um, case study. And I'm sure there are other ways around it. This is just how I how I did mine, and it was very straightforward that way. If you click on um, if you click on settings, you can also have access to how you want to um, display things. So if you want to put author name and put like, hey, Tiffany, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you want publish date, reading time, how long it takes to read them, likes, comments, I usually get rid of all these things, and then publish date, and then yeah, this is about it. And then layout, it, rather than just one column, I like to do the magazine style, which shows you multiple views. And so that's how mine looks like this, if you can see. Yeah, and you want to go to, this is like, it looks like this because, yeah, there we go, you can see more here. And then... Navigate menu, you want to update contacts. So let's click on the contact. And then now your thing again. I'm not going to update this now, but you can get in touch. Hey, what I did here, um, you can just again double click and then update the, the text here. Um, I always keep this, but I personalize a message here. For example, I say, you know, thanks for visiting. Um, I always love uh, connecting with people. So reach out if you want to just chat, blah, blah, blah. Uh, just make it friendly. And then this is probably not it. I sometimes send newsletters, so you can get rid of this. I think this is kind of irrelevant. So getting rid of this and then bringing this up a little bit. There we go. And then, you know, this is by the designer. You can update this too. So probably created with attention and care or attention and love, something like that. You can just update that. Underline, oh, not underline. Okay. And then by Tipster. 22 yeah that's pretty much it if you want to go back to home manage menu home this is how i do it does that make sense if you have any questions please let me know in the comment below um i think i think this does it uh, i think i did it very super plainly um just very simply uh which some of you might want to go a little bit more creatively but it does the job um and it, it's a great first start so if there's like something that you want to pers like personally, personally touch, like those are something that I spent more time on, but otherwise like keeping it simple and focusing on, you know, providing more context as to how your work, past work is related to this work and how you are a valuable UX researcher because of this past work experience you have in a different field. I think that's one good thing to highlight. Um, but otherwise, resume and case study projects and just really putting the attention on case studies, I think what's gonna be really important. So yeah, once that's done, you can either preview or publish. Um, yeah, that's about it. All right, I totally forgot to mention how to manage the site, including the domain. So here you go. So well, you're gonna start here um, by looking up Wix.com. And then this is the one that I just created, um, but looking into uh, site action, and then you're gonna click rename site. And then you can name it however you want, but what I was gonna mention is this is the default site uh, URL. So you're gonna have hotdomain.com, slash my site. So you can put um, UX research, portfolio if you don't want to look uh you can lowercase okay ux research portfolio oh you want to keep it simple ux research is the, the domain like the defaulted um url name but if you do want to purchase your domain and and, and just look up how to be on com or something or how to be below com then you want to upgrade now so if you click on that you are going to be taken to a bunch of different options. So these are the website um, plan option where um, you'll see a bunch of options, but I believe I have the one that is the unlimited for now. Um, but you get free domain for one year um, and then you don't get Wix ads 
and then you also get custom domains. So if you want to do it free, you absolutely can. You can just, um, but your your website name is going to be like Wix, blah, 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 com slash. So, you know, the, the hiring managers will know that you've used Wix to create your website. But if you want to keep it professional, I highly recommend that you utilize the, the website plan, um, the premium plan. Um, I believe this is unlimited is more than enough. Um, and then actually looking at it, combo use might actually be sufficient enough. Um, it seems to, I don't think you need any of these actually. So all I'm looking for is no Wix ads and then custom domain. So combo actually might do it. Um, and then, what am I doing? Um, and then yeah, that's how you pay for it. But I just wanted to show you what that looks like. So using my old one, I'm gonna do site actions, rename site. And then this is what it looks like. Um, site URL, this is currently it. And I can manage my domain. And then it'll show you, um, you know, when it will be renewed. Um, and then show you, you can buy your domain. And you click into that. You can look up whatever you want. Um, Sylv Sylvia, Sylvia Morgan. If I look up Sylvia Morgan, if my name is that, then you want sylviamorgan.com, right? So if I want to look up things, domain, um, you're going to be able to see a bunch of options recommended for me. So it seems like sylviamorgan.com is taken, but there are some other options as well that you can, that are your options. Um, and like I said, if you are new to Wix, uh, the domain is going to be free for a year. It's usually like $15 a year anyway, so it's pretty cheap. Um, the only thing that's kind of expensive is the, the premium plan, but I think it's worth it for those who are serious about uh, becoming a UX researcher or um, designer. So, yep, that is about it. Well, that was it. Thank you so much for listening in, you guys. Um, I hope that was helpful. Um, if it wasn't, please let me know how else I can help. Um, and yeah, good luck with your building out your portfolio. Let me know of any questions again. Well, thanks again. And bye!